standby for manual transmission in three, two, one. Say hello to my little friends. O7 Commanders, Manus Dextra here with my easy engineered Vulture Bounty Hunter build. Much like the Viper Mark III, this is a ship that should not be missed by commanders who enjoy bounty hunting and PvE combat. And much like the Viper, this is a ship that is greatly improved by engineering available from level 1 engineers. As always, I've included a Coriolis link to this build in the description. While you're checking that out, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Elite Dangerous content. So, let's go to outfitting and break this build down. Starting with hard points, the Vulture has two Class 3 slots. We are using large gimbaled multi cannons in both. These are engineered to Grade 5 overcharged. One uses the incendiary rounds experimental effect for better damage against shields and the other uses corrosive shells for enhanced damage against hulls. For an easy engineer's build, it's really hard to beat overcharged multi cannons and the combination of incendiary rounds and corrosive shells is like the peanut butter and jelly of anti-ship weaponry. Multi cannons engineered this way use very little power and provide high levels of sustained DPS. The only real downside at all is that they require ammo, which means you'll need to synthesize reloads in the Hazrez or make frequent trips back to a station. But to my mind, this is a small price to pay for such majestic levels of destructive power. These mods are available from Todd the Blaster McQuinn. Moving on to utility mounts, we have a chaff launcher and three Class A shield boosters. The chaff launcher is not modified. One of the shield boosters is engineered to grade one heavy duty with super capacitor effect, and the other two are engineered to grade one resistance augmented, and they also both use the super capacitor experimental effect. This is pretty much my standard mix of engineering upgrades for shield boosters, as it gives us the best mix of damage resistances for all damage types. These upgrades are available from Felicity Farseer. For core internals, we'll start with reactive surface composites for the hull because this gives us the best mix of resistances for specific damage types, and we'll engineer this to grade 1 heavy duty with deep plating to add a nice absolute hull boost. This modification is available from Liz Ryder. For the power plant, we are using a 4A engineered to grade 1 overcharged with a monstered experimental effect obtained from Felicity Farseer. One of the biggest flaws in the stock Vulture is its undersized power plant. However, this upgrade pretty much solves the problem. However, you will still need to set your fuel scoop and FSD to power priority 2 in your right side panel to make sure everything works when you deploy hard points. For thrusters, we're using a 5A engineered to grade 3 dirty drive tunings with the drag drive experimental effect from Felicity Farseer. This is pretty much standard for combat ships and any other application where you want to go fast and thermal loads aren't an issue. For the FSD, we're using a 4A engineered for increased range with the mass manager effect. Again, this is pretty much standard and it gives the Vulture a respectable jump range of just under 22 and a half light years. Life support is an unengineered class 3D. The power distributor is a 5A engineered to grade 5 charge enhanced with the cluster capacitor effect. This is also pretty much the standard upgrade for combat ships obtained from the Dweller. For sensors, I went with a 4A engineered for lightweight to grade 3 from Felicity Farseer. I used the 4A because it has better range and performance and I thought it would make finding targets in the Hazrez a bit easier. However, if you want to go with a 4D sensor to save a bit of mass and money, you probably won't notice much of a difference. 
Moving on to optional internals, we're using a class 5 biweave shield generator. This is also pretty much the standard for small and medium combat ships, mainly because of its ability to regenerate much faster than standard shields. For engineering, we're going with thermal resistant grade 3 from Elvira Martuk, and we're using the fast charge experimental effect. Thermal resistance is a good choice because standard shields are weakest against thermal weapons often used by NPCs. This upgrade helps to minimize that weakness, and the fast charge effect allows our biweave shields to regenerate even faster. In the next class 5 slot, we're using a 5D hull reinforcement package engineered to grade 1 heavy duty with the deep plating experimental effect from Liz Ryder. You could also go with thermal resistance here to better balance out your hull resistances instead of taking a boost to absolute hull strength. In the class 4 slot, we're using a 4A fuel scoop for quality of life while traveling. To finish out optional internals, in the class 2 slot I've added a 2D module reinforcement package and in the remaining class 1 slots I've added two additional hull reinforcement packages and one more module reinforcement package. These do actually add quite a bit of protection. While I haven't bothered to engineer the HRPs, this would be another place where you could balance your resistances or just add a bit more absolute hull boost. So, that's the build. Compared to the fully engineered Viper, the Vulture as built is definitely slower and it seems a bit more fragile than the Viper, despite the fact that it has much greater absolute shield power and similar levels of resistance. I think this is mostly due to the Vulture being bigger, slower, and consequently easier to hit. On the plus side, the Vulture is much more agile than the Viper. I appreciate this a lot since I fly casual, even in combat, and I can't be bothered to learn how to fly properly with flight assist off. Also, according to Coriolis, this Vulture build has a sustained DPS rating of 62.8 as opposed to the Viper's DPS rating of only 52.4. You can definitely tell the difference when engaging with bigger and higher ranked ships. Once I got over the novelty of killing one of the biggest ships in the game, the Anaconda, with one of the smallest ships, the Viper, I have to admit that hunting Anacondas with the Viper isn't an efficient use of your time or multi-cannon ammo. The Vulture definitely makes much faster work of big ships, especially if you target their power plants. So. As usual, I'll leave you with a few combat highlights and you can see for yourself.
Until next time, Commanders! Thanks you for your cooperation.